about to bring a legend up on stage here. And uh, I love this guy because he has been an unbelievable giver in the short amount of time he's been a part of this group. Um, I think just a couple of months ago came aboard and has been on uh, every Zoom call. Um, we've done some podcasts together. He has reached out to me multiple times via text and given me calls. Hey, what can I do? How can I help? What can I do? I love that. He has absolutely just been a giver who authentically wants to help the people in this room, who authentically helps his students. He is a master of creative financing. He has flipped property and structured deals every way you can, every way you've ever heard of in many ways that you probably haven't. Um, he <laughs> understands his business at a fundamental level, at the political level, uh, at the legal level, and he is working in a lot of ways to help our industry uh, with regulators and that type of thing, just understands that stuff at a whole different level. I'm really, really proud that he's part of the group and I'm proud to bring him up, Mr. Lou Brown. Here wow. he is. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, so hello. Everybody say yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I hope you're having a fantastic day. You know, um, one of the things that I love when I get in a room like this is just the giving, the sharing, the caring that, that just shows up among all of you. So I just want to thank you for that. Uh, it's just fun. It's just fun and it's exciting. Those of you who don't know me, how many of you don't know who I am? Never, just, what, who the hell is that guy? Uh, right? <laughs> Only one guy. I, I was hoping it would be like 50% or something like that. But no, I've been buying, holding, and selling property now for over 40 years. I am a very blessed man. We have a uh, seven-figure-plus business just in collections every year on holding property. So I'm a big believer in the buy-hold-sell strategy. And uh, I come about this from humble beginnings. My mother came over to this country as an immigrant. She was... Uh, from Scotland, she came over as a war bride. And as a war bride, she came over on the Queen Mary. She had met her American trooper husband. Everything was gonna be fantastic. She got to this country. She discovered he was an alcoholic and an abuser, and she had to get rid of that guy. She was strong enough to be able to leave that relationship and kind of be here all by herself with no relatives and and no situations that she could really manage. And then she met my father, her second mistake. So then it just ended up being the two of us, and um, we kind of raised each other, and we had some interesting experiences, like no money, like really like cans, beans, um, TV dinners, that was my life. Our dining table was a Samsonite card table that we bought with S&H green stamps. So I remember what it was like to have no money, and it's, a, it's really a, a tremendous excitement that I get to talk about what happened since then. And I met one of my mother's friends, and I called her friends aunts and uncles because I didn't have any aunts and uncles. And uh, this lady was named Aunt Mabel. And Aunt Mabel gave me the rest of my life. Because at eight years old, she told me that she bought the duplex that she lived in. And she said the people on one side were paying enough money to cover the mortgage. And that meant they were living for free. And this little kid that was hiding out from the rent man because my mother said, shh, don't answer the door. And I said, why not answer the door? She said, because we don't have the money. She says, we're going to have the money on Friday. We'll just pay the rent then. And I said, wow. So I got to see what life was like on the other side of the door. And it's not pretty. And the experience that I had was Aunt Mabel was living for free. And here I was having to hide out from the rent man. And I said, there's another, our parallel universes, right? There's this other whole universe out there of people with knowledge. So I started watching Aunt Mabel, and then sure enough, she bought another house, another duplex, and she said the people on one side were paying enough to cover the mortgage, and the other money was theirs. 
And then she bought another one and another one and another one. Talk about target marketing. It was all on the same street. <laughs> so she was in a situation in her life where she got to live life in a different way. Bought a new car, Cadillac, every other year. And I really got to see what life could look like. And so one of the things she said to me at 18 years old is she said, you need to buy a house. Now, by the way, she spoke with a speech impediment. She, she's not like this. So she, she's not like this. You had to listen because you didn't understand what she was saying. <laughs> so, so not making fun of her, just telling you that anybody can do this business. And what was really cool about this is that Aunt Mabel gave me the insight that I could actually, at 18 years old, go buy a house which is exactly what I did. I bought a house by taking over the existing financing on the property. Now, back then, they had a thing called NENQ loans, right? Non-escalating, non-qualifying loans. So you could step in and take over someone else's financing, and that was a really cool thing. But, of course, they took that away from us. Congress, in its infinite, bought wisdom, right? We all understand that they're bought and paid for. So sure enough, uh, I was able, though, to learn that I could come in and take over existing financing. Well, back in 1982, they passed that law called the Garn St. Germain Federal Depository Institutions Act. And I've been around long enough that I actually was impacted by that law because they took away my NENQ loans, right? The possibility of taking over existing financing was taken away from me. And I said, I got to read that law. And in the law, I discovered that there was an exception. When someone places their property in trust for estate planning purposes, the lender is prohibited from calling the loan due. And I went, aha. So that's when I embarked on a journey of learning about this thing called trusts. And in 1983-84, I started traveling all around the country to learn about these trusts so that maybe I could actually use that because I thought that was a pretty amazing thing. Well, sure enough, I was able to discern that, learn that, put the paperwork together to do that. And fast forward to this day, I've never been to the bank. I've never qualified for a loan on a single family or small multifamily property. The reason is, of course, I discovered that there was another way that you could do this business without having to use bank financing. And, of course, uh, private money financing is another great way of doing it, my friend Jay Connor talks about. And it is just such a phenomenal thing that uh, I started sharing that with other people and started teaching other folks back in 1986 and actually did my first seminar in 1987, and I've been a teacher and a trainer ever since then. We've had some great success, and I just wanted to share with this group that, you know, I've been a stage speaker all of these years, and pretty much where my customers have come from is I have gone and spoken on stages. I've spoken for Eric uh, at his great group, and you know, there's just some other folks in here for Jay and for Ron Legrand and others that we've had great success with. And I wanted to uh, share with the group that live events are not dead. Amen. Live events are not dead. Back in March, I was in Orlando as the resort was literally closing down around us. They were shutting that place down, but we had a group of folks there, and we served them right through to the end of the event. And then I decided I was going to do another live event, and that was in June, at the end of June, in Las Vegas. We opened up Las Vegas, and the event there went phenomenal. And then this weekend, actually starting on Friday, I'll be in Atlanta with another live event. And one of the things I just wanted to share with the group is that, hey, you can still do this. <laughs> you don't only have to do a virtual. We've done some great virtual events. And I, I love virtual. First of all, it's very low stress. 
uh, and, and tying in with Lee's comment about uh, very low expense as well. You know, our expenses just changed dramatically because of going online. Loving it, loving, loving, loving it, getting out of bed, going into my studio, which is only feet away from my bed, <laughs> and being able to um, share a lot of information that I've learned over 40 years of being in this business. So I just wanted to share that with everyone that it's, it's still good and still considered to do live. Now we're doing a combo and we started about five years ago where we were doing live streaming from a live event. And that went very, very well and it has for years. And we all know that we have a certain percentage of our customer base that cannot travel. They got five dogs, they got shut in, the dealing with mom and, and parents and children and this and that, and they just can't travel, but they want the education. So I would encourage you, if you're going to do this, do both. Do, do the live streaming as well as the live event, because we also find that there's a great audience of folks that do want to come to live events. And it's not just for the live event information. It's for the networking. And we've all learned that the networking online is a little bit different than the networking in person. So <laughs> the, the experience that people are having and um, just the, the ability to connect with people and go to lunch and go to dinner and chat with them in the hallway, it's just not the same online. We try to do as much as we can to get people connected online, but it's still not the same. So I wanted to give you a few thoughts about that. Um, one of the things that I wanted to accomplish, so my mother taught me about being a volunteer and about giving of yourself. And one of the things that I started early on in my game was I volunteered for our local association, the Georgia Real Estate Investors Association. In short order, got on the board of directors there then I was asked to be on the board of the Real Estate Leadership Association of America, became the vice president, president of that. And then I became the founding president of National RIA. So maybe many of you may have heard of National RIA, National Real Estate Investors Association. They have about 40,000 members uh, today. So one of the things that I learned from that experience, first of all, those were nonprofit organizations, but that doesn't mean that there's not a profit made, uh, that uh, there was significant money coming in the doors on each one of those organizations, and I learned some valuable lessons with that. And one of the things that I wanted to just sh say to you that I had a goal back then when I created National RIA of changing the conversation around the word real estate investors. Now, when you hear the term real estate investor, what do you think the public thinks? Douchebag. Douchebag. <laughs> Shark. Aggressive. What? Aggressive. Aggressive. Predator. Predator. Lying, cheating, stealing, money grubbing, good for nothing. Welcome to your industry. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what the public thinks. So one of the things that I was looking to do is to change the narrative, change the conversation around who we really are. Who are we? We actually buy dilapidated, abandoned properties. We hire people locally. We buy supplies locally. We put children into homes. We put them into the local schools. We support the tax base. We pay back taxes. And we get no credit. And I said, we got to change that narrative. We got to change who we are and what we do. So I started a conversation around changing us into affordable housing providers. Because isn't that who we are? Those of you who are buying and holding property as well as flipping property, we are affordable housing providers. And you know what makes that true? The fact that nobody can buy your house if they can't pay for it, right? If they can't qualify for the loan, 
they can't pay for it. So I've got $400,000 affordable houses, $600,000 affordable houses, and then I've got houses that are a lot less expensive than that. But one of the things I wanted to create is a brand, a brand that people could live under. And so I created the Certified Affordable Housing Provider. So this brand, back in, 19, in 2012, I just said, I just want to do something different. I want to create an umbrella for who our folks are. I don't want to just give them information, but I want to give them something that supports and helps them to build a business as well. So sure enough, I embarked on this journey of creating a certification program, and it has worked out very well. So we now have licensees in all 50 states that are using our brand and building local community-based businesses, usually within five miles of where they live. So as a result of building their business in a different way, and focusing their business in a different way and being different in the community as well, being different in the community so that you're not saying to the mayor or the city council or the housing code inspector, you're not saying, hey, uh, I, I don't, uh, uh, I'm a real estate investor. You say, hey, I'm a local certified affordable housing provider and this is who we are and this is what we do. So I actually created a book around that, uh, and the idea is that we can, we can do good while doing well. So my book is Doing Good While Doing Well, Amazon bestseller, and that was something that gave a foundation to who we are and what we're doing in the local community. So I wanted to just share that with the group as well to have another look at how you're presenting yourself in the marketplace and who you're saying that you are. So I created a mission for our folks. And the mission is we transform lives through affordable housing to empower families and individuals to enjoy the American dream of home ownership. So that mission now has been adopted by all of our licensees nationwide and all of them are using that in their local community when they're talking to city council, county commission. Because let me tell you something, my friends, the government does not like you. And I'm not talking about the federal government. I'm talking about the local governments. I'm talking about the attorney generals of the states that you're in. I'm talking about they have been talked in their ear about who we are and we haven't had our own representation to talk in the other ear about who we really are. And we all have a responsibility to say something, to be something in the community, to share that information with those folks. And if you don't, I promise you, the rules are gonna change. I promise you, they're, going, they're, they're coming after a lot of people and they're trying to take us out on the very things that have made us wealthy. They don't like a lot of things that we do, not knowing that they're actually good things in the community. For example, lease options, owner financing. They don't like that stuff. They want banks to do that. They want people to either rent or buy. That's it. They don't like this stuff in between. And I'm, I'm alerting you not warning you, I'm alerting you to the fact that that's real out there in the world because there's a lot of government workers, government officials that have certain impressions about who we are. So we've got to change that narrative and I just wanted to alert everyone so that we're all on the same page together and sharing with the community uh, about a different way of being. Like I said, we buy abandoned homes, we, we restore those homes, we hire people locally, we buy supplies locally. These are the messages that we need to give to the market. Now, as far as me, uh, my ask for you guys is I took 10 years writing a book. It's called Buy, Hold, Sell. Is that simple enough? <laughs> buy, Hold, Sell. And uh, it's out there now, and I need help with a book funnel. 
I'm just like Jay, I need some, some direction and guidance on what to do and how to do it to get our message to the market and to share with people you know, that they can have the kind of life that I've had and do have because of buying and holding property, but also supporting people in home ownership and the possibilities of having a different life than the one they've got. So anything that uh, you can give me feedback on. Now also, I'm available for anyone's podcast. I'd be glad to do that um, and enjoy the process as well. I also uh, have some products that I speak on the road on. I have the house monster. The house monster is finding the buyer before you even buy the real estate. So what happens with that is anyone who is challenged, they're concerned about being in this business, they're afraid to be out there in the world, this helps them to already have a customer before they buy the real estate. The second is our trust system. Uh, land trusts and personal property trusts, love to speak on that subject, learned about it way back in the early 80s, went to many, many attorneys, developed paperwork, worked with the American Probate Council, We've got some really great stuff there, and it's a full-blown system that helps people to do their own trusts and have their own trust created, and then they can run it by a local attorney. And then the third is my property management system. So this is a subject that's not often talked about out here in the real estate community, a property management and it being an income stream and I've got a full-blown property management system on that as well. So any of those topics that might interest you for doing a JV or working together with, uh, with you on what you're doing, my name is Lou Brown. My cell phone number is 678-6. Four four seven zero six seven eight nine three eight four four seven zero, and it's L Brown at streetsmartinvestor.com. L Brown at streetsmartinvestor.com. So thank you all. I appreciate you. I would love to help you in anything that you're doing in this business. It's been very, very good to me and my wife and my kids and uh, love to help you as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, baby. <laughs>